Are you always like that? You had to, because uh, like hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like you have so much wisdom. Now. Yeah. So it's easy to look on, look at things and be like, man, this is how I am. I, while, while I was living it, I was still narrating it. While I was living it, I was narrating it. Because what I mean by that is like, like I said, I'm going to make this change to see what happens. And I ain't going to lie, it's scary. I ain't going to lie, bro, it's scary. But when was that, though? When you said, I'm, I'm, what change was it? What, what so what happened, was, okay, so what happened was uh, I worked <laughs> at Warner. I don't even want to say their name, but I worked at a record label. And... You know, I've always been great at what I do, uh, but the George Floyd thing happened, and that was like that changed my life because when George Floyd happened, that was the first time that white people were like really like sensitive to black people. Like, mm. damn, that's what y'all been dealing with all this time. It's like, yes, <laughs> y'all just had to see it. That's why the most powerful uh, the thing ever created was a camera. It's the most powerful tool ever created. It's more powerful than anything in the world because the camera is going to change this world. Look what happened with Puff. Mm. He said he didn't do it. <laughs> Everybody getting better. As soon as you saw it on camera, it changes everything because I see it. So, so for me, I wrote this letter. So George Floyd thing happens. I'm working at the last company I'm at, and they call. And they say, and by the way, at record labels, they don't ever say, get on the call now. They don't work like that. Like, they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. They'll be like, yo, Jay, yo, John, John, I'm sorry. Joe, yo, Jay, Joe, 4 p.m. I need y'all to clear your schedule. I need y'all 4 p.m. They always give you a couple hours if it's an emergency. In this case, they said 15 minutes, which was weird. I'm like, 15 minutes? I thought something bad. I thought, like, we was all losing our job. I, I couldn't, like, in my mind, I'm like, what the, what's going on? So they get on the call, and then they go, the uprising is happening. And I'm like, that's what this call is about? The fucking uprising? Like, it, was, it bothered me because it was like, dog, black people have been dealing with this the whole time. We, like, like, George Floyd did nothing to me because Rodney King did it first. Mm. Watching Rodney King get beat up, that did, and getting them police officers getting up and high fiving each other, we don't believe in the judicial system for us. Mm. So when George Floyd died, it was just like, damn, another one. White people was mad. So they get on the call and they're like, hey. So the CEO at the time says on the call, he says, to all the black people, no mind, just like 200 of us on the call. On this, it's a Zoom. He says to all the black people, is there anything we could do to help you? Is there anything we could say? Is there anything you want to say? And everybody looked like, y'all both looked like, what? So nobody said nothing, but I was pissed when he did that. And by the way, we were friends. That was my friend. So... I was like, I think I need to help my friend understand how to interact with black people more because you're the CEO, you're running the company, there's a lot of black people, black artists. So I wrote this letter about the black experience. And it was basically like, yo, so look, when you come in the game, this is what you're taught. You gotta work twice as hard to make half as much as your white counterparts. You gotta, uh, you know, we don't see nobody at the top that's black. Everybody black at the top got a white boss. Y'all can come in the room and play our music with N words in it. And we can't say nothing about it, even though part of us is like, does he say it when I'm not around? Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to like give like, black people don't have no power, so don't expect us to speak up because it's already a miracle that we're here. Mm -hmm. So that letter changed my entire life. So I wrote that letter. It was called, and, and, and before I sent it to the CEO and a COO, I sent it to two, it's only, I was the third highest black person at the company. Right person at the company. So I sent it to the only two people who were above me. Just like, yo, wrote this letter to those guys. What you think? And the lawyer, he went in. Why would you write this letter? Why are you talking about what it's like to be a black executive when this is about George Floyd dying and about black people being underserved? And I'm like, oh, I thought it was all the same fucking thing hmm. to me. So I felt like shit. It was like one in the morning when I got his response. So I was up to like five in the morning. One of my homies, you know, like you're on Instagram, you check your Instagram late in the night. One of my homeboys liked it, like liked the picture of mine, like four in the morning. So I called him. I'm like, yo, bro, don't be weird. I know I'm calling you at 4 a.m., but you just like the picture. He's like, yeah, what's going on? I said, bro, I wrote this letter, and I just need you to take five minutes out and read it. And he was like, cool. And he didn't call me that night. And I went to, I wound up going to sleep because I felt like I got it off my chest. You know, I sent it to somebody because I, I, my heart is pure. I was only trying to help. I didn't realize that me trying to help made me the enemy. So 
I sent it to my guy. And when I wake up, he calls me, wake me up like nine in the morning. Remember, it was like five in the morning. So he calls me, wake me up like nine in the morning. Like, yo. I'm like, what's up? He said, I sent your letter to such and such and such and such. And I was like, oh, okay. That mean you liked it? And he was like, did I like it? Nigga, I cried reading it. And the other person I sent it to, he cried reading it. He wants to talk to you. It's my boy. I'm like, but by, by the way, he's huge. It's like, I ain't gonna lie, it's Larry Jackson. Larry Jackson at the time, he's running Apple. So Larry gets on the phone with me, and me and Larry have been knowing each other 20 years. We ain't never talked that long. He was on the phone for an hour and a half, and he was telling me everything he's been going through as a black man. And he was like, that letter helped me. And he said, I hope you don't be mad at me, but I also sent it to Hannah Carp, who is the editor-in-chief of Billboard magazine. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's cool. I, my, my, Jay, I, we live in Atlanta. Like, black people in Atlanta are not afraid of white people. Yeah. It's, the, it's the only place in America where black people are not afraid of white people. Like, what? You saw, you saw what happened when we, they shot a police officer here. We burnt that bitch down. You ain't going to play with us here, black. We ain't, the mayor's black, the police chief is black, all the powerful lawyers are black. You are not going to play with us. So that's why I don't, I'm not afraid of white people. I'm a black man in Atlanta. So, you know, Hannah's like, hey, look, I'm going to put the letter out. It's incredible. She said, me as a white woman, I can relate to. Cool. But I want to take your name off it. I want to make it anonymous. I'm like, okay, I guess so. I don't, I don't care. Letter goes out, goes crazy. And then I have all black people know I wrote it. No white people know I wrote it. White people are looking for the guy that wrote this letter. Because every black person in the music business is sharing it. Like, you white friends, you need to read this letter. So I have all these people looking for me, like, who wrote the letter? Who, who's anonymous? So they figured out it was me. So then I get on the phone with this lawyer, and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm a fucking, they're not going to play with you. I'm going to tell them you wrote the letter, but you have to stand on it. You are the, like, black people are like, you are the voice of us, of them, because she was a white woman. She said, but you have to stand on it. So I said, I never, not, I didn't have a problem standing on it in the first place. I don't care. So she calls the guys at Warner and tell them I wrote the letter. They was like, oh, because everybody was trying to figure out who wrote it. She was like, they was like, oh. I'm like, it's not a bad thing. I'm just telling you the black experience. So anyway, man, white people are so passive aggressive. And that's my problem. I, the letter, I wrote the letter a year into my contract at Warner. Well, I don't want to say the company. At the last company I was with. I, I was a year into my contract when I wrote the letter. They, were, they held on to the fact that I wrote that letter. And when it was time for my contract to be renewed, they fucked me. And by the way, the CEO apologized to me a year later. Like, I, I did you dirty. I can't lie. I understand it. But that shit changed me. Because here I am, a black man, trying to show my white counterparts. By the way, I made music with, I made music with country folks. White folks. I, I didn't realize that I was clear. I, you know what I mean by clear is like my skin. Like, they saw me as black, but I was like, OJ. Like, you black, but you ain't like them. Okay, I get. I didn't know that. So I wrote the letter. Then it was like, I like oh, nigga, I like you OJ. <laughs> oh, nigga, you OJ. Yeah. So now, most, dog, anybody in the business will tell you. Ask Mayno, I mean, Wayno, ask anybody in this business, they will tell you. When you have a job, the courtesy is to give you six months to let you know if your contract is going to be renewed or not renewed. They told me 10 months in, and my lawyer, don't have him talk to nobody. Don't shop him to nobody. He's our guy. My lawyer was like, they love you. I'm like, really? I didn't feel love, but okay, I get maybe, maybe I just don't read it. Ten months they told me that. Three days before my contract is up. They call me and tell me you ain't get no contract. With no, no reason. Then I called a black lawyer who worked there, and I'm like, man, they damn run on my contract. And she was like, Ray, don't they hate it that you wrote that letter. That's what it's about. I forgot about it. So when I left my last situation, now my back's against the wall. So I got two choices. I can either go beg for tips, but everybody going to say to me, what? Why are you here talking to me? You, it's, you was over there. They told me you wasn't going nowhere. Something must be wrong with you. Mm. That's why they, they some bitches. And I say, they, like, I'll never respect them for that because I feed my family with this. So they set me up. So at that moment, I had a choice. I could either go ask for another job. I can build myself. So I was like, put a camera on me. I'm smarter than 99% of these niggas any fucking way. Ask me a question. Watch how I answer. I stopped putting clips out. Shit started going crazy. By the way, when I sat down with the CEO of Warner, who I'm cool with now, we cool now, 
First thing you want to talk about is a podcast. You kill it. Man, fuck out my face. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm different, bro. Like, I love, I, by the way, I love him. Love his fam, love him. But, bro, you show me that my family don't matter to you. So I have to love you from a distance now. Because I would have never did that to you. So, here I am. I'm like, dog, I cried. I drove home every day for a month. That's why you can't make me hate Kanye. Kanye has a song on his Donda album called 24. I listen to that song every day on my 45 minute ride home, back to back to back. And it's a line in the song where he says, God's not finished. And I'll be tearing up and driving home. God ain't finished. Get to my family, nothing. they wouldn't even know I was tearing up. Get in the house, we're gonna be fine. Put a camera on me, put a camera on me. And now all of a sudden, everybody's losing their jobs. Now the people that lost their jobs is calling me saying, Ray, what should we do? Hey bro, if you don't build a community, you are gonna lose in this America. This America is not about individuals. This America is about a community. Everybody who left Puff community left after they saw him abuse women. Community is shut down. He can make money, but the community is shut down. Community is shut down. Nobody's going, nobody going to support you no more. So I tell everybody, I'm like, and you know another thing that used to change me, Jay? I'm going to tell you. I used to, when I was working at my last company, every kid I was signed requested to meet one person. Gary V. And that was offensive to me. No offense to Gary V. I'm like, why the fuck you want to talk to him? He don't know shit about music. But I understood. It's because he made them feel like he cared. He probably does. He does care. So I was like, man, I'm going to just be Gary Vee of music. I'm going to just give information out. That's what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, it was like, I would go places, and now people were like, yo, Ray, Ray. And I'm like, damn, like you just never know who's watching. So for me, man, I, I lost my situation. I had, my, I had a studio around the corner. It was costing me 20 bands a month. They were paying for a good part of it, half of it, while I was making money doing other half, but that helped. So they tell me about my situation. 11 days into January, nigga, I got to pay rent on the first. I'm still 11th now. So now I got to struggle up another 10,000 to pay the studio, not including that. In 20 more days, I'm going to have to do it again. Mm. So now I'm like, I'm really drowning. Because I'm like, I don't know what to do. Boy, God is so incredible. A friend of mine hits me. My, my boy wife hits me. Yo, you know, such and such. Yeah, yeah, what about him? He's selling the studio. Selling the studio? What? But he just needs somebody to take it now. I'm like, well, let me go over there and look. Beautiful. How much you want for it? Tell me the rent. Rent was under 4K. Under 4K. Beautiful spot. He was like, just give me the money I put in it. Wrote him a check for 200K. Two days later, moved into the studio. Now my studio is cheaper than that. So that's what I'm trying to tell. That's why... I'll scream at the top of any mountain to anybody that looked like us and tell us, bro, you got to just go. And I know it's scary. And I know you're worrying about losing. And I know you're scared of your family and your parents going to laugh at you. Your friends going to laugh at you. Everybody going to say, I knew you didn't make it. But dog, trying is the win. There's only a, in life, there's only W's and L's, wins and lessons. But you don't get the win or the lesson unless you try. So trying is what trying is the win.